Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Get Kicking Movies. We are back for a brand new spanking episode of Our Rule of the Fucking Night. We are back, yes, and today's video we are going to be looking at some Arrow box sets. Yes, I'm back. This is the rebirth of the Arrow collection. Um, this has been a very long-awaited video for a very long time because I haven't done one uh, since last year. So this is a very, very nerve-wracking video to do for me because I'm revisiting a label that I absolutely enjoyed collecting and I sold it for a PS4. Well, you know that because you bloody, I bloody told you like so many times on live streams. So like, that's, that's what you're going to say. So we're going to get straight into it. Um, so... On the, I think it's today, this is the 21st when I'm recording this in the morning. So this is actually the same day uh, at 7.30 um, tonight, uh, which I'm just going to say now. That's when I'm going to be doing the watch along. Uh, this week's watch along is My Bloody Valentine. So that's going to be really good. Film's going to start probably in the around half eight, something around that when the others get on. And I'm going to be showing you what stuff I've been buying from Indicator because I've got a big box to show you. But without further ado, instead of me or Babylon about Indicator, let's get on to the big boys. Yes, I'm Ryan of Let's Get Kicking Movies and welcome back to Arrow of the Fucking Night. Approximately 10 hours later. Arrow video of night. The intro sequence is calling The blues are shining very bright The kisses are solid It's the arrow video of night The intro sequence is calling Arrow video of the night Right, so let's get straight into the video uh, so you're probably wondering, yes, it is a couple of hours after I did the first bit of footage. The reason for that is, I fell asleep. <laughs> now, true story is, I did record the video, but the, my face in the background was a bit like out of focus. And I'm actually sitting downstairs uh, for a change, have a bit of a change of the scenery. You know, it brings a bit more life into the, to, into the video. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first box that we've got right here is the Arrow Video Empire Screams. This is the normal standard edition. And this did come in a, in a lovely deluxe set. I missed out on that because I wasn't buying Arrow at that time anyway. I was by buying uh, some horror films, like new uh, things I want to add to the collection. So get around uh, getting this finally, but on a standard release, I'm really happy. Uh, this cost me about, I think it was like £23. Uh, well, I had a 20% voucher to use, so I might as well get right into it like, and get it like while, it, while it's at that price. The only problem I do have with the box set itself is it's fucking flimsy. Like, you know, it's a good, it's a good box. Like, I love the artwork and everything, like, when I first saw the box set, but it's just... Could have been like a nice hardback box with all the movies in them. Like, it would have been a bit more nice, I think. Uh, so, in the set, you do get at least five movies, which you probably already know, but I'm just going to tell you anyway, because I love the artwork. You've got the Dungeon Master. Dolls, which does come with the original artwork that is used for the original poster. My God, look at that. Right there. And that is also used on the 88 Films uh, label as well. So even though that one's out, out of print, the only way you're going to get that movie now is on is in this box set or if you're ordering from online. So that's basically all I can say for that. You also get Arena. Robo Jocks, which I started watching. It looks like a... Like... Uh, a rip-off version of Power Rangers and also Sella Dweller which is written by Don Monsini who is also his pen name was for this movie was Kid the Boy which I thought was really weird because the fucking creator of Chucky only did like at least one feature film that isn't related to that character and I thought that was really interesting I love the artwork on that but I think my favourite artwork, which I'm going to show you now for Cellar Dweller, is, the, is that. Look at that, that's gorgeous, man. 
really gorgeous. I love the blue like coming coming from that chest there, and I'm wondering like, is this really set uh, in a Star Wars? Or just somebody creating like brand new creatures coming to life from a fantasy book? I, I, I don't know. I'll have to see where it takes us, as I normally say in my videos. But it's a box set I've been wanting to get for a long time. Hopefully one day I'll be able to get my hands on the deluxe edition, and I can have it thick cases more than your normal standard, you know, slim cases. So that's the Arrow Video box set galore, why I? And now we are going on to, we'll, go, we'll do the, so we've got, got some jello here, because this is another flimsy box set. Uh, this does contain three jellos, that is that written and directed by Sergio Mar Mar Martino. If I said that right, I am a bloody legend. So the three movies you do get in this collection, which is the one right here, is The Case of the Scorpion's Tale, Your Vice is a Locked Room, and Only I Have the Key, and The Suspicious Death of a Minor. Oh, look at that art style on that for the, for the box set. But this is another disappointing release for me, because it is caught, it's just flimsy cardboard. Like, like what would happen, it's easy gonna get away. Uh, I need to try and find a way to get some protection for these sets because these are the only way uh, you're gonna get them now. Because no one Arrow, uh, they've got a thing for not making like thick hardback cases, um, slip boxes and that. And to be honest, I think it's just laziness. Fl flimsy box set like that. Look, it's nice to have, but you can get these movies separately anyway. But I've got them in the box there because it was easier uh, for us to get because I really wanted to see these movies. But, but like saying to myself, I should have just got them separately. It would have saved the habit. I, even even though I could have got one of these in the in the Jello Essentials box sets. I do have two of them coming up right now, so keep an eye out for that. So here's the one that was in. I think it's in the white or. Oh, Blue box I think I believe it is, and that's Sergio Montino's uh, The Suspicious Death of a Minor, which is basically about, uh, I think it's about um, this uh, undercover cop who's like investigating the case um, due to like a murder of a underage prostitute. So that's going to be very interesting to see. And you do get uh, audio commentary by Troy Howarth. The authors of So Deli, So Perverse, uh, which is like the 50 years of Italian Jello films. So that's an interesting thing that you're going to get on this. So we get a little in depth of Jello right there. You also get the one I love the artwork on, but due to like being light, you kind of really tell from the red. So here is your vice is a locked room, and and only I have the key. So that looks really good. Got your disc right there. Bum bum bum. And that and this is used for the original poster. The original, uh, the original Italian poster. To be honest, I am becoming a, an interesting fan of Italian movies because like I think there's like a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I haven't like experienced. Like there's a lot of the horror stuff I, I wanna watch. You know, I haven't even got around watching the House by the Cemetery that I got on DVD, which you've seen on a live stream. And plus, like, also, I've got like so many flesh years as the watch as well. But then I realised they're fucking cut, aren't they? So I'm not really going to get much out of that movie than than anything else. Like, I watched like April Fool's Day, uh, which doesn't have a Blu-ray release over here. And I thought that movie was cut, but it was intentionally supposed to be like that way because it was supposed to be like a murder mystery kind of movie. And um, it does tell you in the fucking title, but like, it's just like how great the film is. But now we've got Sergio Montino's uh, The Case of the Scorpion's Tale, which I don't really know much about. I think this one is set, set in Athens. I, I think like, there's this mysterious like murder going on. Uh, the person's this like, money being involved. So, that's going to be interesting. So that is the Sergio Man Martino collection. Once I put them back in here. So there are the 
the two standard box sets uh, that I've got, it's just flimsy cardboard box sets. I just, I just think they're just terrible. But I might as well go through the Jello box sets, which I also have here. Um, we've got the black edition and we've got the red edition. So we'll go through the black edition first, because this is the one that really I'm really looking forward to uh, watching. Here we have got the Jello Essentials Black Edition. And you get three movies in this. And you get Smile Before Death, The Weapon, The Arrow, The Motive, and The Killer Reserved Seats. Oh, Reserved Nine Seats. No, me, I, how the fuck I forgot the number nine, I do not know. But this does come with movies on the back if you want to read that. You can't read it because it's going to be blurred. But this does come with some lovely artwork. There is a bit of a dint. White dent at the top of the day, but that's all right. But look at that all star man. My god, this is actually the original poster uh, that was used for the Italian killer who reserved nine seats. So that is really good to have. I think that's brilliant, that's gorgeous. I don't know if it's a bit naughty, but let's see how far, far I get with it. So we'll take the movies out. So here, here is Smile Before Death, which is, I think, this one is set. Like in kind of like a, like a school or something, then you got this like the school photographer, but she I think she ends up falling in love with a student, but find out the student has practically been murdered, and it's up to her to investigate, like what is going on. So I think this looks really good. Um, filmed by Silvio and Matteo. I do not know who he is, but this does come with a booklet as well, which is very interesting. Well, I'm not going to go for it because you know what booklets are. So you see many videos like from everyone showing like the booklets and that. But you do get the original poster that, that was used. Or something like that. Um Oh I was right. Alright, I was right. It was it was about a teenager. And next one we've got the weapon, the hour and the motive. Which which is the one that's for things like said during like the Vatican or something like that. There's like there's been multiple murders of women being stabbed in like in in the church. That that sounds really interesting to me. When you about that, that a wide-eyed young boy who lives at the local convent hold the key to unlock the mystery. So this looks really interesting. Uh, a jowl, but set either in a church or in the Vatican. Uh, that's all I'm just, I've got to say for that. It just really intrigues me. And here is the. Italian post that that is used for the original release So that is good to have E team as well. That's what you want to see. I think this one's a 15. Oh no, it's an 18. So The killer who reserved seats which has an extraordinary <laughs> Interesting post that that arrow has decided to do like all the others have interesting uh, Pictures like that, but this one it looks like a more like retro, like retro, like Italian look that you would get from from the 60s. So I think I believe this one came out in 74. So I'm looking forward to seeing this one. I don't know much about this one, but I think this is like, I think this is like set in like some kind of like, like hotel or something. Just to, just to, just to find out that there's, there's a ruthless killer like going on. That's killing them one by one by one. So that's going to be interesting. And here is the original poster that is used. That is actually on the box set itself. So that is uh, some really interesting artwork on that one as well. So, put that over there. I'll have to put them away later. Uh, the next one we've got right here is the red edition, which comes with some woman, woman about to get taken away. So very interesting. So on this one you do get the possessed, the fifth chord, and the pajama girl case, but I want to talk about the pajama girl case because it's actually based on a true story. Um, so here is the artwork on the on the front. Look at that! That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. That. Ooh, brilliant. Uh, so the mo so as I said, um, this this edition was very interesting to me because the first one, the possessed, uh, which I don't know much about. I think it's about like some like. Writer who uh, goes off there to find like an old like past girlfriend of his, uh, just 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 to find out that there's um, this disappearance or something. 
That like happened but it could, it could lead, it, lead into this woman being murdered. So that's the possessed, which looks really interesting. It's like it's more, I, this is my opinion, this is like going to be the most like bleakest one I'm going to see. Uh, it's not going to be like, you know, your over the top slash, like slasher movie. But this, I think this came out and if I look on the side of the disc, this came out, I think it's got to be 70s. 1965. But yeah, it's not going to be that serious, but an interesting murder mystery. Like, who's been, who's been murdered? Why is this one being, we've got quite a lot, so just being that. I've just got to, I've just got to, you know, get on with it. And the next one is the fifth chord, which really intrigues me. It's a, it's another movie uh, that's directed by Luigi Pazzoni, who also did The Possessed. But I think that's, he directed with someone else. I think it was uh, uh, Franco Rosalini. So he finally got his, like, got to do his own movie, and this stars Franco Nero. I think he plays, like, some kind of um, journalist who's, like, an alcoholic. Then he's like he gets and signed like under this like this case uh, to work on just to fact just to find out there's a fucking insane killer killer on the loose and it's and it's up to him to find out what's going on. So here is the post that that is used for the for the Italian release. Uh, I think this one came out in the seventies. I think just known from it looks like a seventies movie. It's nineteen seventy one. It's all, this is why it's always good to deep dive into the world of Jello is that you never, you find like all these like different directors that you never heard of and it's, it, and it's a really like interesting thing to go into. So like the next one is the Pajama Girl case. This is the, this is based in Australia and it's li literally, um, it is started by, by an Italian director. I don't know who directed it. Well, I'm just looking on the back of here. Well, it says here, yeah, um, uh, throughout the late 1960s and into the 70s, the Italian Jello movement transported the US to the far corners of the globe, from swinging to San Francisco to the Soviet occupied Prague. Only one, however, brought the genre as unique brand of mayhem as far as, as far Australia is director Flavio uh, Mocanini. If I can pronounce that wrong, I'm an idiot. Uh, tragic and poetic the pajama girl case so it's basically out of this lasso um it's like fine on the beach and just like i feel it's just being shot in the head i'm just reading about and dressed up in distinct yellow pajamas so it's basically like some kind of sick killer going or going around killing women and putting like he's like trademark kind of thing which leads to the signature it's like putting uh yellow pajamas on these girls so this is going to be very very intriguing and film set in Australia, what the hell are you going to expect? And Ray, and actually Ray Milland is in it as well, which I'm really looking forward to uh, watching before I accidentally knock all my stuff over. So that is the Jello Essential Box Sets uh, that I've got, which I'm going to have to put, put away later because I'm going to get through this video. Now, oh, we've got at least six limited edition sets to go through as well. So the first one we'll go through first is uh, Carly Way. This is the 4K edition uh, that came out. Oh my God, if you if you, if you see like the 4K scan on this, absolutely brilliant. Um, but. If for me, it'll be Blu-ray because I bought it for the Blu-ray. It is like the edition if you want to get yourself a Blu-ray copy of. You can't get the, like the normal standard Universal uh, release, but that is well out of print. But if you want like a copy right now, get the Arrow edition. Uh, this is the Arrow exclusive, so you get the original like artwork that was used for the poster. And I prefer this. I think it's just got more like an artistic tone towards it. Like, that gangster feeling, like what are you gonna get from a De Palma? Because like, if you remember from, you know, uh, Scarface and how brilliant that is, like turning a 30s film into a modern day uh, gangster movie, it's it's a really interesting take to put towards it. And using the Columbia, Colombians as the main target, it gives like a more interesting take towards the movie. And that's how you, 
though if you you wouldn't have Tony Montana without without bringing a uh, Carl Evo in the way. And this is based on a novel. Uh, this does come with a lovely poster, which I'm going to show you now. Once I get it out, open. Oh, oh, look at that! Well, Carl Evo's way moving forward. A gas blurred. Look at that. So this is like the new commission artwork that they use for this release. Man, that's gorgeous. Of course, you also, because it's double-sided, you do get this as well. So if you want a uh, frames, get a frame for it. See me, I would like to get that framed. But I'm probably going to just keep it. You do get a lovely thick booklet. Uh, I think this is, uh, how many pages do you get in this? You get about 50, 54, 55 pages. Which is good. Do a zoom. And here is the 4K right here. Uh, so what I'm going to show you, you do get some post art cards, but I'll show you them in a minute. Yeah, I, you do get the Blu-ray, which I put first. And then you get your standard 4K right there. And the best thing is, um, this is by Universal, but you do get the Arrow uh, logo on there as well. Uh, which is good and for being a new release I'm really surprised the transfer surprised, surprised me so I've, I've looked, at, looked at it myself it looks gorgeous man it looks gorgeous so here are your art cards look at that so that's the lover of Carlito and then you got his brother who is the lawyer I can't remember then his name but I know, he's, I know he's a Carlito as well, but I can't remember the lawyer's first name. And I swear, he's called Frank in this. If it's Frank or something like that, or, or unless it's Charlie or something, I can't remember. But this is the famous scene uh, where he's just trying to get get out of, bloody, uh, out of the crime business. He just wants to run, run his own nightclub, get on with his life. But yeah, so getting dragged into it again. And what happens? He ends up fucking get, get, getting into a fucking uh, gunfight, isn't he? So that's what you're going to expect. Uh, you also got pictures of the brother, brothers right there. One with, when he was drunk. And to be honest, this is probably like one of Sean Penn's greatest roles. Because <laughs> he just plays like the villainous uh, kind of character like so well. You also get some of the actual characters, which I cannot remember the names. You also get uh, Carlito and um, John Legaisimo Le right there. And here we've got the two look, the famous kissing scene where they make up with each other. <laughs> and that, and there are some really interesting postcards. Um, I'm glad they're in black and white. It just gives you that the war kind of gangster feeling, like what you got from the 40s. I'm glad they like to put that towards this edition. Man, I'm in, I'm in love with this. I'm in, I'm definitely. It's definitely a great release. Um, if you want it in a nice limited edition set, you can get the commissioned artwork as well, which is um, very nice. But I prefer the original artwork more. That's just my personal preference. But what are you gonna expect? It's me. The next box that we've got right here is another Jalo that came out in 1963. It is a Mario Baba movie. And this is the one that is set like during like some kind of fashion passion, but like there's a like a murderer murderer like like on the loose, and the, at least like six victims that is on the horizon. So, what does that mean? The murderer himself is on the loose, and this woman who's that beauty passion, what's gonna happen? Well, basically they're gonna get fucking killed. And this is Mario Barber's blood and bat lace. Um, this is the one that is came with a slip cover, which is very interesting. I never thought you can get a slip cover with these editions, so I had to bloody get it at the chance. This did get re-released on a 4K, so if you don't want the Blu-ray, you can get the 4K, which is very good. I'm glad this got re-released because I used to have this actually. I used to have like the normal standard edition, uh, like last year, but I'd never got around to watching it, but you know what I mean, I sold the Arrow collection, as everyone know, but now I have it back in the collection, I've got a really nice edition out of this. So, look at this, that's brilliant. Oh gorgeous, I have to put it back, 
because I'm tr because I haven't got it in for risk I'm trying trying to do that. So you can see it better now. So that's that's one thing. Uh, so so all together you do get like different artwork on the actual uh, disc. Look at that. We've got new commission artwork that is used right there. Gorgeous. So get a better look. Look at that. Nice. So what else do you get in here? You also get the booklet, which is like like a silhouette with like women on it. Look at your north. It is a bit naughty. <laughs> looking at looking at the front. So you get more about the film in there. I think that's the uh, one of the one of the uh, detectives that is working. You also get like scenes from the movie. My God, this is actually gorgeous. Like the killer looks like he's a bloody mask, like serial killer. Just looking at it. Um, now we have got the lovely post, and now you'll get a better look at the artwork on you. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous, blood and black lace. That's beautiful. But you also get one of the po Italian posters that you get, unless that's a one of the Brit, one of the American ones, I would say. But how gorgeous that is! But the new commission artwork is brilliant. But my theory is got to be on the actual uh, case itself. Now I've got to try and find a way of putting this back together without bloody. Ripping it! No, 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 no. So, that's that. Now, we are going to look at the postcards. We're going to look at the poster in a minute. It's called Blue Side or something. But these are actually lobby cards like that they use for the actual lot, uh, artwork. But look at that. So, that's probably one of the victims. And then you do see, like, I think like the managers and stuff like that, but you do get like the original uh, artwork that I used for the Italian poster, right there. Just him dragging the woman off to a distant planet or something. <laughs> oh, look at that man. Absolutely gorgeous. She looks like she's about, about, to get, about to get it on. And what's he up there? He's holding his bloody suitcase up, up in the air. Bloody hell. But I tell you what, when I looked at the transfer for Blood and Black Lace, my god, it's absolutely stunning. And here is the, the Italian poster right there. There we go. Lovely, gorgeous. So that is Blood and Black Lace. Right there. Absolutely lovely box set. Lovely, it's a lovely addition, I must admit. The art style on the case, I'm going to mention again, is probably one of my favourites. My god. Great addition. Can't wait to dig into this. So the next one we've got here is set during the... I think it's either the Civil War or the, Reg the Revolutionary War or something like that. I'm just thinking from the top of my head because I don't know much about this movie, but I know it's a, it's a Sam Peckinpah movie. It stars Charlton Heston and Richard Harris, who plays Dumbledore, if you're not known, in Major Dundee. Look at that. Turn it round, it's actually one poster. I do have the J cards for all of these, but they're upstairs, which I'm just gonna mention. So in this box there, this is very different when it comes to having the movies. They're in digipacks for some reason, which are right here. So Major Dundee, you've got the free art roll version, which is the limited edition in the box set, because I'm thinking they're only doing the extended, I think I believe it is. And also uh, the extended, which is the one that most people would watch. But you do get some inside artwork as well, which is really good. It's kind of thin if you're looking at it from yourself, but it's a, it's, a, it's a really, it's a really, it's a nice change, but I really like, I think the show's just had it all in one case. It would have saved a lot of trouble. Next, you get a poster, as you always. It's just gonna have a similar trend for the rest of these box sets, isn't it? So, nice. Here we go. Major Dundee, imagine on that frame. Absolutely gorgeous. 
And this is like, I, th I don't know, I think this is the, the post that they use on the front, but I think this is the original uh, 60s poster. Unless this film came on the 60s or 70s, I can't remember. That's gorgeous. Charlton Heston, Richard Harris, and Major Dundee. And the booklet's kind of like different actually, because it's got like a quite glossy kind of book. It does have Viva, Viva Dundee. Oh, that, that's gorgeous. Very, very, very different. You know, everything, you know. And looking at the cast, James Corbin's in it, which is very interesting to see. Um, Jim Hutton. Bloody hell. I didn't know there was other actors I know, knew out of this. Bloody hell. A tale, a, a tale of ambition, obsession, and desperation. Sam Peckinpah's Major Dundee. Absolutely gorgeous, man. Ooh. Smash, and I look forward to reading that uh, after I watch the movie. So yeah, that, they're really good stuff. I'm, I'm really happy with them. Major Dundee. And now we're going into more my zone. I've watched this this year, right? And my God, I fully enjoyed this. It's got so many fucking twist endings. You didn't fucking believe it, man. Oh my God. Wild things. Oh, fucking wild things, man. God, set, set, like, some kind of, like, swamp area. I think I'm going to say, uh, near Florida, uh, kind of way, which I'm going to say. Look at that, you get it on the spine as well. It's gorgeous. Stunning artwork. I've got it with me. I know Jake has got this as well, and Jake also has, uh, the same edition of Carlito's Way as well. So, if, I think you already saw that, I think, I don't know. I'll have to ask Jake, <laughs> Jake tonight, like when I do the stream. So, here is the poster. Ooh, look how gorgeous that is. I love the, I like this like kind of paper, paper, it's like, like, you know, cardboard paper. It just feels so nice to put in a frame. Look at that, that's stunning. Plus you also get the poster as well. With, um, with me Campbell as well, you know? She plays like the kind of goth character. But my god, how this dude got framed for fucking sexual assault, I do not know. They're dying to play with you. I do not think I didn't want to fucking play with them because I didn't want to get, get, get in the fucking, get in the fucking summer if I met those fucking two glasses. My god, menacing. Uh, same artwork on the actual cover as well. Everything's the same. Uh, I feel like they should have had some different artwork on the book. Uh, it would have been nicer, but it's still a beautiful edition. Ooh, I'm not showing that because that's a spoiler. So you got what? So you got one of the uh, victims right there, who's like accused Matt Dillon de Dean Summon. So he just didn't know if it's true or false. More artwork there. And my god, wait when you see the twist ending, there's so many endings to this movie, it's just unbelievable, like, it's just so great. Oh, look at that, man. Gorgeous. And yeah, we do get some different artwork. On the actual kit, disc. On the artwork, and I think that's fucking great. But we also do get our cards. As well. Kevin Bacon up in here, good. Got Neve, Neve Campbell right there. That, oh, she's one hell of a bitch in that movie. She's fucking annoying. Matt Dillon. And another picture of Neve Campbell. That's your art cards you get in that. It's just basically everything's the same. Plus, you just get more like eyeballs on the actual case, which is a change. In my benefit of the doubt, I'm just going to say here, I wouldn't say it's the best edition that Arrow has done, but the film is absolutely class. Definitely got to have this. And this was only 12 quid as well, which is very interesting. <laughs> so they must have been trying to get rid of this particular edition for quite a long time. So, glad to have 
uh, wild things. Um, we've got two more to go through and then we'll go on to the main event. Now we have got Italian's uh, first hour horror movie in Mill of the Stone Women. Look at how gorgeous that is. This is, I think this is, uh, is a re-release. I think it got uh, re-released on 4K, so they decided to do the Blu-ray as well. Um, I think they did do a previous one, which is just on Blu-ray, but that one's long out of print now, so lucky enough to get this again. And in stock again, it's very intriguing. Unless I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm an idiot. But all of these do come with the new uh, BBFI logos. But looking at this one, uh, it's basically all about this like art student who comes to this like old mill uh, to write a, you know, like like it's kind of like a monograph or something. Um, it's goes to the women in thrones of death and torture, but it's actually uh, created by the by the mill's owner who's like this kind of like crazy uh, professor who's like got a got a thing for like you know for changing women in, in the things that it shouldn't be. So that's all I'm just gonna say from there. That's from me from thinking from the top of my head. So Mill of the Stone Women. Look at that. Gotta have different artwork on the discs. So you do get two, four cuts of the film, which is good. You've got the original poster right there, which I absolutely love. It's just like, it's like it looks like a jello, but it isn't. <laughs> but looking at that, it does look like a horror movie. But for being the true first uh, Italian horror movie, it's a very interesting thing. I'll give that credit to you, Gary, because I know you told us that, didn't you? So here we go. Uh, so that's supposed to be the professor. Oh, these are tricks. Ooh. And then we've got uh, the Italian quad poster from the movie. The American quad poster. Unless I'm wrong, could be the British, you know. And we also have the professor up there, there you go again. So that's really good for the postcards. And now we do have the postcard. Do, do, do. One heart. Oh, the fuck me, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. But then you look at this one, it looks more, <laughs> looks more medicine. Look, look at that woman's face right there, it looks proper to fall. <laughs> looks like, oh, I'm about to eat me dinner. No, 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 no. Something like that, it's up to fucking rip your fucking face off. What does that say? Chilling. Yeah. Chilling. I'll scare your pants off. Montrose, have you been petrified lately? Grizzly, blood is red in Technicolor. Micro bear, do you, do you dare to be scared? Fright, Ennen, and wonderful excitement. That's fucking cringe. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, terrifying horror spectacular in blazing Technicolor. A parade pictures release. I bet this was just like a one day event just looking from this movie. <laughs> so, another great addition, and we do get the booklet as well, right there. I love that artwork with the professor in the mill. It's got a nice gothic look to it. Look at that. Gorgeous. Look forward to watching this one. Italian horror. Got another Italian horror. I think I've got a mixture of Italian movies that I've just bought, so look forward to digging in eventually. Uh, so, last one House by the Cemetery. All about a family moving into this house who is actually uh, finding out the, the secret of it uh, to find out that the, haunt is, the house is actually haunted and the mysterious creatures is racing from the graves. But look at this artwork for this brand new edition. This is another one, uh, if you're looking for the original standard release, which is out of print. Because these, I think these are only gonna be on a limited run. So looking at North, I've got myself a copy. Glad to have it. 
here we do have uh, the artwork on the, on the case. I don't know why, but why is that being pushed down? Right, there we go. Now it looks better. 8 inch well, which is good. You do get some lovely artwork on the actual disc of the bat being splattered. <laughs> but you do get the which original Italian artwork right there. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that, man. Is it me or is that dude like looks like he's gonna like slice me up in throat or something? He looks like a more creepy version of, um, <laughs> you know, of Jack Torrance, which I'm just looking at it. But you do get like a different colorized version on the on the R cards as well, which is really good uh, with the house. But for looking at these, these are actually uh, the lobby cards that was used, uh, for, you know, for the poster and that. But look at that, man. That's gorgeous for the lobby cards. And everyone says Catherine McCall in House by the Cemetery. Because I'm, I'm just reading from there. My God, absolutely gorgeous. I think, I think this just came out in the 80s as well. If I'm wrong, I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, they're gorgeous, man. Gorgeous, why I? Why I man, why I man, why I man, why I man. Gorgeous. But I've got to tell you, right, I think the, something that hits me, what, what hits me so hard, is definitely like probably one of my favorite posters out of all of them. It's definitely this. Look how gorgeous that is. Wow. Oh man, I'm gonna have to try to get a frame and get this frame. Look at that. I'll have to watch the film first, see if I, see if I like it. But directed by Lucio Fulci, the director of the New York Ripper, City of, City of the Living Dead, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Demonias, Demo Demonia as well, which you can't get on Arrow. Which I think that's got a, I think that's got eliminated as well. Looking at it, plus you get different artwork with the, the with the little girl on there. It's the artwork I've just got to show you. And yeah, my God, look how gorgeous! You kind of really tell, like due to being lighter in here. Looks like she's about to get fucking murdered. It's not a lass. Bloody hell! But look at this. You get a full impact on the house right there. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. So a really, really good addition. I would normally talk more within the hour stuff, but same me, I've been out of the game for a long time, so I could be a bit rusty. But another great addition. Right, arrow, and now let's go into this beauty right here. <sighs> Hellraiser, Hellraiser. I fell to my feet, Hellraiser. I put a spell on you. I have such sights to show you. Oh, the famous quote from the first one: "I will tear your soul apart." Yeah, it's what happens when when you see seeing those movies so many times. So here we have Hellraiser, a uh, quartet of torment. Gorgeous novel artwork, but I wish it wasn't fucking dark. I wish it was like a more like lighter box set. The box set that was used for the original trilogy of movies that was released by it. My God, that box set's gorgeous, but I used to have it, but I got rid of it. But I wanted this because you get a lovely hardback bloody boot, man. Right there. Look at that. It's literally, the image is actually a skeleton. which shows you the different like pins like coming out with his head and that. That's gorgeous. And it's and the book's called Ages of Desire, right there. I just imagine like everyone like unboxing it. Bloody hell! I didn't. You never knew that you were gonna get a hardback book from Arrow, which is like a thing that nearly everyone wouldn't have thought of getting. So this is definitely a really good thing to have. You get about 200 pages. We do get a picture of Frank right there. Up the very good, hand the tab. Or a cigarette, if you're wondering what a tab was. 
And then you have uh, Kirsty right there. Say, I am in hell. Help me. My God. Clearly, I'll remember the freaking characters looking from it. Oh my God. You see, you're just saying like some of like the artwork that was used, the dog company. But I just got all sorts of fucking ages of this side. You got bloody nails, nail board right there. Then you got the make of getting put on for like pinhead or some of the center bites. My God, this is pretty, pretty insane book. Oh man, that's gorgeous. Got to daddy. Ah, oh, Claire Higgins, who plays Julia. That's who I was trying to remember who that last last was. Uh, I heard that she was out uh, for, the, for, the, for the love of horror this year. So I would have loved to meet her and how she got the role for the movie. That would have been cool. This was like one of the posters that was used for New World Pictures. I never thought that was a poster. I've never seen that, that before. <laughs> Plus you got a picture of clicker right there. Oh man, this is gorgeous. Definitely a really great addition for the book. But the only downside of it, you don't get no uh, lobby cards, you don't get like no poster, you just get a digi pack with a, with a slick cover, which is like very disappointing. The only thing what else you do get is this got this has got holes in it. That's basically what the box set is. It's a hard, good hardback box. Like what the movie is, what the movies are, because you get all the films in this. You get the first four. You get the first four movies from Hellraiser, Hellbound, Hellraiser Two, Hell, Hellraiser Three, Hell on Earth, and Hell, Hellraiser Bloodline. Because that one's set in space, but that's mostly like an anthology. So here is the slip cover right here of Pinhead. And the best thing is this has a lovely translucent cover. So you see him uh, defleshed. Cause like once you take it from the box, he gets deflashed into this creature. It's like more like Fran kind of creature. Then once you lift it up, he turns into a skeleton. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Then you've got the Lagman's La uh, configuration on the back. Uh, I am in hell, help me. When you open it up, you get this. We have such size to show you. And then, you get the discs, which is literally got bloody chains on it. Like literally, literally if you take the discs out, it's just full of chains. So well, that is another disappointing thing about the box set. Um, the worst looking one, in my opinion, is Hellraiser 3. I'm sorry, I know it's came on the night, I would have thought it would have looked better, but it's the transfers on that one, it's just terrible. Uh, the first one, second one looked gorgeous, while the fourth one is even stunning. Cause that one's set in space. But for a limited edition, like if you are wanting the Hellraiser movies, just get the normal standard edition or get the trilogy box set that you can still get. Because in my opinion, it's not worth 50, 60 quid. So, but now look, I'm stuck with it now. So I, I can't complain. So <laughs> that, that's all I can see on that on that point right there. So yeah. Uh, Hellraiser, Quartlet of Torments. Just get yourself the Scholar Box there if you fucking see it, see it, in, see it in the wild. Fucking, be, fucking bad place to fucking go and get it. Definitely not worth the money. <laughs> so, look at how I went through that, but now, we are going to end off with a good, good side. Because we are now ending off with the lovely Psycho box set. Oh, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. I love like the shower curtain um, on the slick cover. I find that that's a really nice uh, base to put towards, to put towards like, the box set. My God, look at this. The Psycho collection, Psycho, Psycho 2, Psycho 3, and Psycho 4 at the beginning. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Well, let's take this off so I can show you the back. So here's Norman dressed up as his mother. Look right there. There's the house. You can't really tell because I do it being like dark, like being black. I wish it, it wasn't, 
you know, that, but that, that's the problem. So let's get the movies out. Get a nice thick booklet as well. I think this is like a hundred, like nearly a hundred odd pages. 118 pages, so that's really good. Nice thick booklet. Just in order to pay that, I feel like the Hellraiser uh, booklet definitely wins. Because it's like, these movies is all the basis on Ed Gein as well. That's how the book was inspired by. Um, but he bloody hell, Ed Gein also inspired the creation of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Used to, used to get, like, get around wearing his mother's skin. He yeah, literally de-skin de uh, women and make, make like the the bones in that into like his furniture and stuff. Bloody hell. Bloody insane. Well, look at that. Ooh. Oh, this is definitely, this is an amazing booklet. And then you got Norman Perkins as the director uh, for Cycle 3. My God, this is great addition. Only limited, the 4K box set has been sold out now. So there's no way you're gonna get your bloody chances on getting that. But here we go, we've got Psycho, which is just the normal standard 40th anniversary edition. There's nothing different about this. This will load up as the normal standard universal um, menu. You do get lobby cards, but I'm just gonna show you the poster. You know what, I will show you the lobby cards. So here's the poster. Uh, the new commission one. I do not fucking like it. But we do have uh, the poster that was used for uh, for release. That's really good. And now I'm struggling to put this back. Fuck's sake. Bloody hell, this is terrible putting, trying to put these back. Paint that thin bloody posters, man. And here's some postcards, I might as well show you. So I forgot her character's name. But we do have Norman, and we do have Marion Crane, who is played by Janet Lee, who is um, Jim Lee's Curtis's mother. This is very interesting. But Anthony Perkins, legendary actor. So. You have your disc, and then you do get the original poster on there as well, right there. And to be honest, I prefer it. Speaking of which, wouldn't it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ooh, that looks better. Ooh, that definitely looks better. That's better. That's an arrow release. To the max. That's how you want your psycho release. Look at that. That's better. So the next one. Cycle 2. Love that one. Hate the artwork. I'm just gonna say this, it's gonna be like a follower following a theme. I'm literally just gonna throughout this video change the colours. <laughs> so I think that's uh, one of the, uh, the women who's doing the investigation on Norman. We have uh, Anthony Perkins right there, who's just got out of the mental institution. And I think that I think that's uh, Mrs. Buell. So it was very interesting in Norman, uh, in that movie. And I watched this last year as well. <laughs> um, so, here we go. Yes, the original poster that was used for the movie. Uh, this was written by, um, I, think I, I think I believe it was, Tom Holland, uh, the director of Fright Night, Charles Play, all that kind of stuff. Open this. Uh, the original poster. So, I'll further ado. I'm changing the poster around. There we go, that looks better. Looks absolutely better, to be honest. Like, the artwork for the new, for the brand new releases, the absolute, 
absolutely terrible. I literally find them hideous. Let's switch it around and have that instead. Cycle free. Still don't like the picture. And now we'll see Norman and the gun in there. So she's just about to uh, get herself checked in. I have Norman and the mean bastard. Fucking, I can't remember the characters, but just looking at her, she do knowing things. She does look like Marion Crane. So that's interesting. Uh, poster, which I actually think is gorgeous. This is directed by uh, Anthony Perkins as well. But look at that, Norman. He's back, running the thing, running the motel. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Right there. Ooh. Change it room. Oh, look at that, that's gorgeous. And the last one is Cycle 4, the beginning. And that's a hideous fucking artwork. In this one, you only just get a poster, you don't get no art cards or lobby cards because it was just like a normal limited release. So this was made for TV. And that was the poster that was used, I was like, what the fuck? And to me, in my opinion, Anthony Perkins is only, it's in like a rough estimate of the movie. But in this one, you do get two cuts. You get the uh, theoretical release, but you do get the the TV aspect ratio as well, because it is a made-for-TV movie. But my God, it's absolutely brilliant. It's quite bloody as well, which is a very uh, interesting thing to have for the movie. But my God, this one is literally Norman ringing on the telephone. He has the urge of like, Wanting to kill again, I was like, "What the fuck?" But you will find out, like later on in the movie, why he wants to kill his new wife or something. But there we go. That looks a bit bad. I wouldn't say it's the best poster, but great number film. And in my opinion, I'm gonna say that the Psycho, but the Psycho uh, film series or quadrilogy is definitely this not a bad film. I really enjoyed all of them. It's just, it's just, um, it's just like that's what I find different. It's, it's consistent. It's not a bad film, like in the box set. I know people that are going to have their own like, personal preferences towards them, but my God, even though the the third one does take forty minutes to get into, but you, but it's but it's a really interesting take towards it. So, cycle box set, get more light. Worth the price, worth 50 quid, because you get five discs, definitely worth the money. Bet, better than this bastard. So, I'm gonna get some light. The Hellraiser Quartlet of Torment, not worth it. But, if you are interested in getting this, you can still get the Blu ray box set. Get them while you still can, that's what I've done. I had to buy it, so glad to have a bit of Norman Bates in the, in the works. But inspired by Ed Gein, what are you gonna expect? Norman, you dressed up as your fucking mother. Ed Gein did it as well. What, what are you gonna expect? So yeah, uh, so after the redo, I'm Ryan of Let's Get Kicking Movies, and I'll see you tonight at 7.30. Uh, I'm supposed to be have a bloody uh, big box arriving in the films uh, from Indicator, so hopefully if they do come, I can unbox them on stream. So so look, so look out for that. Uh, I'm just so the reason I'm starting at half seven. Right, so that was the cycle box set, and uh, so tonight at eight p.m. But I'm starting at seven 
30pm. I supposedly got a box coming today and, I, and I've been, I want to spend like half an hour going through what movies I've been buying from Indicator. Uh, probably just the first bunch of movies that I've got. I'm, I'm waiting for a box today which has 24 titles in it and I'm still basically waiting for them. I'm still waiting for Pal Fighters. That was one that was supposed to be in, in the limited edition box, uh, box that, that I received last week. But I didn't know when the hell that is arriving. Plus I've got the Universal Noir box set coming as well. But I've got all sorts that, that I haven't even showed you yet. But without further ado, instead of me up and on, I'll see you at half seven tonight. And always, I'm Ryan, all those get kicking movies. This was Arrow of the Night. Glad to be fucking back. I'll see you later, guys. Bye.